No, this is not a, ooh, new year, new me, ooh, my goals for 2021 video. No, I'm looking way, way further ahead than that. And I know now that a lot of you are doing that too. So let's discuss how we're going to get there. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. I'm really new to investing and I'm just trying to make my life a little bit easier. You are probably like me and recently got started investing and really just started throwing your money in to get started. And up until now, I haven't really had a target. I've just been trying to save and invest as much money as I can with no real forward goal. I know my investment window is going to be a very long time, so I'm just kind of throwing it all in at the minute. I mean, obviously, I'm trying to be a little bit cautious with stocks and stuff, but I'm trying to get as much money in. That's my fucking point. So today I'm going to talk about what I want to achieve from investing, what's my goal and how I think I'm going to get there. Towards the end, I'll do a little bit of a portfolio update and show how my dividend income's coming along. And then right at the end, I'd love to answer a comment from somebody who's suffering quite a bit of goal anxiety in the same way that I am. So it could be a pretty packed video. It could be quite a long one. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to talk. But if it is a long one, an early like and early subscribe would be lovely. Thank you. But like I said, this isn't a new year, new me video. I'm not going to be changing anything I'm doing. As far as I'm concerned, the year doesn't end till April. So I'm not going to be telling you how much I want my portfolio to be by next December or how many freaking YouTube subscribers I want by next December. Um... I mean, if you wanted to know, we just crossed 15,000, which is fucking awesome. And there's been 1,362 people joined in the last 28 days. Welcome to the channel, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy it here. Take a seat. But I'm not going to tell you that I want like 20,000 subscribers by the end of next year or something. Um, it seems weird to say something like that because I don't know how we've got this far already. Please believe me when I say I appreciate everyone who watches these videos. And if you're commenting down below, I will do everything I can to comment back. If I miss one, I'm really sorry. I comment back to everything, even all the negative stuff. I, I have fun with that one. But I did ask you guys to help me out with this video and the response was absolutely incredible. Generally, I think people invest just to make their lives a little bit easier. But I wanted to put it out there and see if anyone had any other ideas. And you guys did not disappoint. There were some excellent ones. Tyler's 17 years old and his goal is to just invest to get a job in the financial sector, learn a lot more about investing. I didn't even think that was a thing. Kashao here is trying to build up a lot of money so he can invest in property. Some I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, Camille wants to save up for a house. Putting a house deposit in investments might not necessarily be the greatest idea. The idea is that you probably want to take that out within the next couple of years and who knows? In the next couple of years, we could see another crash. And you really won't want to take out your money then. So saving up for things in investments might not necessarily be a great idea. Obviously, because I'm not trained financially in any way, that would be stupid to take that advice. But definitely have a think about it because the history of the stock market is that it is very volatile. And it might be that the day you want to get that house because you've met a girl and all that sort of stuff, that'll be the day that the stock market completely crashes. Sad or Sad came up with one which I hadn't really thought about before. Uh, he initially wants to go for early retirement, but he's getting the money just in case he's unable to work anymore. That's a really interesting one. Yeah, kind of like an insurance policy. And I suppose I can get behind that one as well. Just having your own insurance policy. Pretty cool. Chris is just in it for the FOMO, and that's fair play. Again, Daniel wants a house deposit or he wants a Tesla. Um, I was going for Lambo, but yeah, apparently Daniel wants a Tesla. Um, Tesla shouldn't be that hard to get in a couple of years, so um, that might come to you a bit quicker. Scabbers is going for part-time work after paying off his mortgage. And Investing Ideas wants to put the middle finger to his boss. Um, I hope your boss doesn't see this video. <laughs> Kevin needs his money for hookers and blow, and that is as good of excuse as any, in my opinion. GC wants to work when he wants, that's a very common theme. And Idzik had a really good one, which was generational wealth. Um, something I can really get behind, and if you don't have kids yet, you won't understand this. In fact, I know exactly how you feel by me saying, oh, I want to pass it on to my kids. If you're sitting there and you're 23, no kids, no wife, that sort of thing, and you've got the world ahead of you, you are going to think that. Trust me, 
I did. But from a financial position, maybe teaching them how to grow wealth, if I end up growing some wealth myself, and maybe passing down some of my dividend growth so they don't have to worry about money as much as I did. That seems kind of appealing. Bigad probably wants retirement as well. Yep. Chris, financial freedom. Paul, sailing around the world in his 50s. That's financial freedom as well. Skaz has a very optimistic view uh, and wants to become a billionaire. No reason why you can't, Skaz. You go for it, man. You go for it. Uh, you might want to like start making some businesses and maybe be Jeff Bezos or something though. Piston Slaps retiring early and Peter Istray is also one of the guys that wanted to start the new business. That's a really cool idea as well. Obviously, it's the same theme again. The stock market is all about timing. You don't know when there's going to be a crash again. But if you've got some money elsewhere that you can put into it or you're happy to delay that venture by a few years, then it might be a good way to do it. Omar B is just taking control of his finances. His family have just been financially illiterate his whole life. Same as my family. We haven't got a clue about money. I'm picking this up all on my own now. I'm a little bit late for that. I'm pretty convinced that I'm not going to be a millionaire or anything like that. But hopefully I might be able to pass that knowledge down on my kids and they won't have to sit on YouTube every day and figure it out because they already know it. David wants to pass something down to his daughter. That's a very familiar feeling because as millennials, we don't have a lot of stored capital. My boomer parents have got loads and it seems to be just by accident. They just seem to be born at the right time and their house went from 16 grand to 280 grand in my lifetime. Where'd you get a return like that? Casey wants fire in retirement. Matt's trying to pass on to children and start passive income. Mr. Verk wants to pass down to his non-existent children. Guy's got dreams. <laughs> Jay Cow wants some financial freedom. Chris wants to be a millionaire, but that mainly revolves around financial freedom. And Ian Wright came up with an awesome one, which was, I hope that's not the real Ian Wright, because I imagine the footballer Ian Wright is probably pretty financially secure. I bet a guy called Ian Wright gets that all the time. But Ian wants to invest for the long term so he can choose whether he wants to work or not. He wants the ability to work because he wants to work and not because he has to work. And I like that. That one stuck with me. Because I hate my job as much as the next person and I think it takes up too much of my time for too little money. I believe right now that the world's workers are being financially squeezed and we're having to work more for less and less. And I need a way out. And the overwhelming amount of people in these comments all wanted the same thing. They wanted financial freedom. But believe it or not, there's a lot of layers to financial freedom as well. You've got those guys that follow the FIRE principle, that financial independence, retire early. Hmm. And when you're thinking of those guys, you're thinking of the guys that are living a massive life of frugality and they started freaking ages ago so they can now retire. And the worst thing about them financial independence guys is that they're so insufferable. They take financial freedom to a level of veganism that we've never seen before. They're constantly telling you about it. They're constantly saying, oh yeah, I'm financially free. I don't work anymore. And I don't know about you, but when I first saw those financial freedom videos, I thought this has got to be a scam, right? And I think it is because those people that are watching are writing books and doing podcasts and working. I think of the fire movement as a bit like their keto diet. It's all well and good. The principles do trim the fat and everything like that. But to the average person, it's completely unsustainable. The goal is to have a healthy balance, right? It's the same with losing weight. Calories in, calories out. Yeah, I know I've put on a lot of weight. Um, I'm working on it. New year, new me, yeah? <laughs> and I did mention in a video a few months ago that I was a bit crap at budgeting. And I needed some help because while lockdown has been really good to me, I haven't spent any money because I've basically been working constantly and everything's been closed so I haven't spent any money. I know that when everything starts to open back up, I'm going to have a bit of a problem. And in the comments on that video, many of you suggested Mama Furfur. If you're not aware of her, she's pretty much the queen of UK budgeting and investing. And quite a few of you guys suggested that I should reach out. So I uh, did. And believe it or not, in a couple of weeks, she's going to be taking a look at my finances and tearing them apart on her channel. And while I'm not going to touch too much on that today, I will do a video about how I'm going to implement her changes into my budget. And I'm going to decide if there are better ways to use my money. And you'll get to see all about that when I make that video. But today's video is all about the goal. And I'm in agreement with most of you guys. I want to choose when I want to work and I want to choose what I do for work. 
Because psychologically, there's something horrible about having to go to work nine to five, or like me where I work 48 hours a week. And now I know I've got to do that for 30 more years. <sighs> something has to change. And I prefer it to be sooner than later, but investing is a long-term game. It's not enough for me to go, oh, I want an infinite amount of money for me to live off in the future. Because I'm entering into this game so late, I've got to have a number. And here we go. Here's another investor that's looking at the compound interest calculator. But I'm going to say that I'm going to look at this realistically because I think a lot of people overestimate how much they can possibly get. So currently I have 21,000 in investments and I'm going to set a conservative interest rate of 4%. My goal is to just beat the banks. If I get anything more than that, then that's freaking awesome. However, I do want to be realistic and I do want to be cautious. And don't be an idiot. You're not going to make 120% every single year. That doesn't happen. Getting rich, getting wealthy, getting financially free takes a long time for everyone. It's all about compounding interest. And at the moment, I'm putting in £1,600 a month. And I think within 10 years, just me as my single part in my family unit could completely retire on £10,000 as long as everyone else is working, like the wife and that. My effective part of our household income, including the mortgage and all that, could be paid off with 10 grand of passive income a year. And I'll be like 40 something, so I can still work part time. I can still work when I want. I don't realistically still see myself being on YouTube by then. You guys are getting bored of this video already, so I don't think you're gonna stick around for 10 years. But by having this goal of 267,000 pounds, I can now reverse engineer and figure out how I'm going to do it. And that's the importance of setting a goal. Once you have your big financial freedom number or your net worth number or your fire number, whatever that might be, it could be a million, it could be 500 grand, it could be 250 grand like me. Once you've got that, you can now look backwards and go, how am I going to get there? I do want to be realistic though about how hard it is. I don't think if you're 20 and you're just putting 100 quid in for 30 years, it's really going to work. I'll give you 8% interest at £100 a month and you still only get 150000 after 30 years. But by picking a metaphysical goal like I want to be financial free and then putting a physical number to that of £250,000, I can now reverse engineer that and figure out any obstacles that are on their way. Like my budgeting, I've reached out and figured that's going to be an obstacle for me. How can I beat that? And I'm lucky enough that I've managed to get in contact with somebody who might be able to give me some pointers. Okay, let's take a look at my portfolio. My portfolio is currently sitting at 21,088. It's been a very tough week for my portfolio, actually. We started off the week at 21,467, but over the course of the week, we've seen a rapid decline all the way down to 21,082 today. I don't have any real reason why this might have happened. I doubt it's Kathy Wood telling us there was a crash coming. None of this worries me whatsoever. I'm not making any changes to my strategy. I'm just happily plodding along and seeing what happens for the long haul. But the disappointment doesn't finish there. Because in December, I thought I was going to have quite a good dividend yield. I thought I was going to see a significant step up in the amount of dividends that I receive. And in the month of December, I received £48.02 in dividends. I was hoping this was going to be a little bit more. I haven't got too many of my companies that have cut their dividends. The only one left now, I think, is Disney, which I can't see it bringing back its dividend even into the end of next year. It could be at least two to three years before Disney really thinks about its dividend again. So I feel like it's a bit of a shame that I haven't seen any real growth in my dividends just yet. Perhaps later this year in March, I can do a good comparison between how much my dividend income has grown over one year. And I started in December with a dividend of £6.59 from BAE Systems. BAE Systems is now ranked as a very high quality company by Genuine Impacts, and it has a very cheap valuation. I'm very into BAE Systems at the moment. I'm very happy to continue buying more of this stock right now. I think it has a great future. It's taking on new employees and it's getting loads of money from the government. BAE Systems is personally one massive dividend payer that I'm happy to buy a lot more of at the moment. Then I got £2.31 from Intel, and Intel is a very controversial stock at the moment. If you judge Intel by its quality, it's a very high quality company. Lots of cash flow, loads of revenue growth. It's still doing really well. 
And as far as value goes, it's a really obviously undervalued company. However, lots of other companies on its heels, maybe some mismanagement in there, it's not getting a lot of love at the moment. Intel is one of those companies that has completely lost its narrative. It's gonna take some big changes for a lot of investors to come back. Next dividend was KLA with £2.29. On Genuine Impact, KLA are rated as a very high quality company, but they are considered very expensive at the moment. I agree completely with Genuine Impact on this one, KLA is one of my favorite stocks. I came across this one, I did a lot of research on it, and I realized that they were going to do very well in the short term. And this is one for me where the research really paid off for me in capital gain. However, I expect the dividend growth to be even better. Then Johnson & Johnson at £3.88, a very nice high dividend yield from Johnson & Johnson, a very, very high quality company, and still very expensive. These companies that are expensive right now I would not be buying into. I do believe that I should be buying stocks at a correct price. And Johnson & Johnson is a company that I completely love, but right now it's just too expensive for what it is. I would love to see Johnson & Johnson come back down to $145, something like that. Big buys of Johnson & Johnson won't be happening for the next couple of years, I don't think, because I think it's just gonna stay flat for quite a while. Microsoft pay me £2.15. Again, Genuine Impact has it as a very high quality company, I do my best to only buy these very high and high quality companies. That's where I feel most comfortable. That's how I sleep well at night. Microsoft, I will start buying if it drops down to maybe 200 to 205. I think that Microsoft is just a company that's going to stay expensive forever. But right now, while it sits up there at like 220 or whatever it is, I'm gonna take my time with it. Again, just little drips in maybe, but no big buys. I will definitely be getting around to a video on valuing and how I value companies very soon. 3M at £1.89, a company I wish I bought loads and loads and loads and loads more of. And this company is a very high quality company. Genuine Impact only rates it as a high. And I believe that 3M is still very expensive. But Genuine Impact doesn't rate it as very expensive. So I'm going to take a look into 3M again. And I wouldn't mind finding out exactly what Genuine Impact has in mind. McDonald's paid me £2.50. Genuine Impact rates McDonald's as a medium company, and I don't disagree with that at all. And I would say that McDonald's is very, very expensive. McDonald's is having a very rough time with its real estate and its debt. It's something that I have to really consider, but I have to say that it would take a hell of a lot to make me sell McDonald's. McDonald's is one of those stupidly good brands that you just don't sell, right? I'll think about it. Raytheon Technologies, which is one of my favorite companies, paid a £3.64 dividend. Genuine Impact rates Raytheon as a medium quality company. I disagree with that, but I understand why they are rating it as a medium quality company right now. It's suffering a lot through the pandemic. However, it does have a lot of cash that's going to help it survive through the next couple of years. It's not one of these airline stocks that just has no money whatsoever. But Raytheon Technologies has had quite a good recovery recently, so it's now rated as a medium value stock. I'm still happy to buy this all the way up to about $80, I believe. I'm not making massive buys on it at the moment, but every now and then it keeps getting a bit of a dribble. Royal Dutch Shell came in with a whopping £10 and one pence. I don't even own a particularly high amount of Royal Dutch Shell. I'm happy that that's come in. However, I don't need to tell you about the struggles Royal Dutch Shell is having at the moment. I'm keeping my money in RDSB at least until February. I want them to tell me exactly how they're going to get out of this hole. If they can do that, I'll stick with them. If not, Genuine Impact is rating it as very cheap at the moment, and I can definitely see why. Oil companies have been very beaten up recently. However, oil prices are recovering, and that's only going to bring things back. I would not be surprised if you see Royal Dutch Shell and all the others all the way back up to their original prices. But I will agree with Kathy Wood and I will say that long term, I think oil prices will be on the decline. I'm just leaving a little bit of faith in Shell to see if they can turn it around and start going more renewable. That's just one of my hopes and dreams. Tyson Foods dropped a dividend of 575. Tyson Foods is still my number one pick as an undervalued stock. Genuine Impact has it down as a high quality company and also a very cheap company. This company has no reason not to recover. The only problem it could have is market sentiment as it is showing a lot of bad news and a lot of people don't like to get into it because it's in the meat industry. However, supply and demand, meat's coming, might as well invest. That's how I see it. 
Realty Income is the dividend company and that's still kind of why I'm in it. This company is going for new acquisitions with its new share issuing. For this company, I'm waiting until it comes down to about 55, 54. I can really see it coming down that low before it starts to go up again. If that deal never comes, I'm more than happy to wait and catch it back round next year. And finally, in December, we have Coca-Cola, one of the hardest companies to find on Genuine Impact. Genuine Impact rates Coca-Cola as a high quality company, but of course, it's expensive. Coca-Cola and Pepsi are very quickly becoming the first big casualties of the pullback of the S&P 500. I think I need to reassess where I think I should be buying Coca-Cola right now. But as you can see, whenever Coca-Cola is trading above its normal PE line, we start to see a gradual decrease in price. And the last time it did that was between 2000 and 2005. Since then, it rode the S&P 500 10 year bull run. No problem. But what we know about Coca-Cola is when it gets overvalued, it always reverts back to the mean. And because we're sitting in an overvalued situation right now, we can expect that Coca-Cola probably will not rise in price over the next two years. After those two or three years though, we could see something coming back. So yeah, they're my dividend payments for December. I'm actually kind of disappointed that I don't have more that month. I reckon it might be something to do with me shuffling it around. Most of the time when you're long-term investing, if you just don't touch anything, everything will be all right. And while I'm in my first year of investing, I want to keep that quite heavily in mind. Okay, Rizwan commented and asks, I am 23 and I am investing only 50 pound a month due to my job situation. I am currently out of work and only working in McDonald's in the weekend. In terms of my age, is that a sufficient amount to invest or should I limit my expenses more as I would like to retire at 45 from my dividends? Rizwan, calm the fuck down. You're 23 man and you are working. You're working at McDonald's, that's perfectly fine. You're right. 50 pound over the next 25 years isn't going to get you to a retirement goal. It's barely gonna buy you a Tesla, but you're doing one of the most important things that there is to achieve these goals. And it doesn't matter about the money right now. What's most important right now is that at 23, you've developed the mindset to think about your future. At 23, man, oh, I was doing so much dumb stuff. What was I thinking? And even now at 30, Two, 33, 34, something like that. I'm, I'm one of those ages. Even now, I'm able to start investing a thousand pound, a thousand six hundred pound a month, and I'm very likely to make it to a reasonable amount within 10 years. But you're 23, man, and getting started is what it's all about. And remember, the most important part about investing is time, getting that compounding to start happening. So even though you're only earning enough to put in 50 quid now, once you get a better job and things start to recover, things start to get better for you, maybe then you can start putting in more money. What people tend to do, like I did, is as they start to get more money, they start to buy more expensive things that they just don't need. Fair enough, you're gonna have to get a house and a car and stuff like that, but you can get one that's affordable and you can get a car that's not all about showing off to the world. If you keep this mindset and this discipline over the long term, I think you're gonna hit the goal quicker than you think. So at 23 and only having a small amount of money, just start building something slowly. A lot of stuff's gonna happen to you over the next few years that you haven't even thought of. You don't know where you're gonna be. And trust me, man, at 20, I did not think I was gonna be a firefighter, photographer, paramedic. And then I certainly didn't think I was gonna be this side of the camera. So there's a lot that's gonna happen and just try and calm down. Because at 23, time is on your side. At 35, like I am, time does not feel like it's on my side. Trust me, I've got a lot to do in a very short period of time. And now I've got a YouTube channel with 15,000 people staring at me, so I better perform, right? But that's just my two cents. Very important to just remember psychologically this needs to be a journey as well. You need to not get too stressed about it. Thank you very much for watching guys. I know that video was a lot of me rambling, but it's thoughts that I've been having recently and it's something I really wanted to get out there. I do really want to visit crypto again because Bitcoin and Ethereum are going absolutely crazy again. And I really want to talk about Ethereum because it's got a very slightly different way of going about things than Bitcoin and it really interests me. Thank you very much for watching guys. The investment app that I use is called Trading212. If you wanted to get into investing, you can sign up through a link in the description below. If you sign up through that link, you can get a free share which is worth up to £100. 
feel free to check out the completely free Discord. I'm on there as often as I can be. I'm on there at least every day at some point. But in there, there are so many great discussions and so much learning. I'm picking up so much stuff from the people in there. Also, check out my Instagram. I post on there every time I make a buy into my income pie. And I also post some random shit about my life as well. Is there anything else? Oh yeah, eToro, that's where I buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. If you wanted to sign up for eToro, there is a link in the description below. You don't get nothing for that, you just help out the channel. But eToro for me is the place where I buy my Bitcoin and Ethereum. And they are doing very well at the moment. Thank you very much for sticking with me today. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe and invest. Oh my god, that was such a shit video.